Welcome, welcome to Geek View Tavern, where smart folks engage in loose talk about the geeky movies, television shows, and comics you love. Remember to like the video, share it with friends, and please subscribe. In this episode, writer and publisher Larry Young sits in to help us sort out how Warner Brothers executives can sell DC Comics Publishing to the fans. Okay, Skeeter, hit the intro. Welcome to Geek View Tavern, where smart people engage in loose talk. I'm Dave Albrich. I'm your host and bartender. There next to me is Mr. Tom Mason. Say hi, Tom. Hi, Tom. And for this episode, we've got, uh, we're joined by our very special guest, one of my favorite people in all of Funny Book Land, Larry <laughs> Young, writer and publisher. So, hey, say hi, Larry. Hi, Larry. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> So we're getting together today to talk about this wonderful rumor that's sort of going around about how somebody thinks that DC might sell off or license all their characters to somebody besides Warner Brothers. Tom, you want to give us a rundown of like the summary of where we're at with this uh, this nonsense? So so aside from the fact that this seems to come up every couple of years. Yeah, um, it sure does. and it, it's not enough that DC used to be owned by like a shoe company and then a parking garage company. Um, now that it's owned by a giant digital conglomerate, um, it's going to be sold to somebody for parts at some point, everybody says. And this is based on a story from Bleeding Cool that ran like four or five days ago. And I'll just quote from the story. Uh, Bleeding Cool has heard re- repeated reports that DC Comics is planning to reduce serialized print publication, increase digital publication, and license comic book publication to other publishers. We've heard that Marvel, IDW, and Dynamite have all approached DC, but the prices said it were too high. And then uh, Larry and I got into this conversation on Facebook, more or less that same day. And uh, Rich Johnson, who wrote the story, uh, piped in and said that some prominent big name fans that we would apparently recognize had put together a cache of big money. And we're, yeah, yeah, <laughs> which, okay. and, and we're looking to... Uh, to get on board this gravy train of licensing Aquaman and Metamorpho. So hey, Larry, that's where we are. Hey, Larry, do you have any thoughts about this? I do, Dave. <laughs> like, as, as you know, I, I published comics uh, for a while, and I have some insight into what happens. Obviously, is a much smaller scale yep. than DC, but, but, I mean, some stuff are truisms, and Rich's story was great. He said there's a couple of fans, a few fans have put together this consortium where they're going to have to collect $500 million as if that would somehow do it. You write your tech for half a, half a billion and you get to do comics. Well, that, while that sounds ludicrous, you know, weirder <laughs> stuff has happened. Yeah. Weirder true. stuff has happened, but I, I don't, I just don't understand how that, why that would be an attractive thing for somebody. And Rich kept saying, well, if you wanted to publish DC comics, since you were, six years old, you know, that's something that would be attractive to you. But like, if I wanted to publish DC comics since I was six years old and I had that money to do it, you can make your own better DC comics. I mean, look at the boys. What right, is sure. that? You know, I right. mean, pick up your own thing and, and go nuts. And then you get to keep all the money. Like I, I cannot believe that we're on this earth where somebody that has made so such good business decisions as they have, that kind of resources at their, you know, command. Right. I mean, and then they're like, well, you know what? I always wanted to write the creeper. <laughs> like, <laughs> it, it just doesn't make any sense to me at all. But, you know, I don't know. I don't understand how Kim Kardashian and Kanye got divorced. So, yeah, know. they said that seemed like a match made in heaven, did it? <laughs> well, maybe, sure. maybe, maybe some fans can pull their money together and put them back together. <laughs> Man, right, exactly, exactly. Hey, Tom, what would you do uh, if you had 25 million laying around? Would you put it into the kitty to be able I mean, to be part of the partnership that published DC Comics? No, because if I'm using my own money, <laughs> if I'm using my own money and I have, it's $20 million just for fun. Well, first of all, I would give a lot of it away to my friends to sort of, you know, raise all boats or whatever. 
because I don't need $20 million. And then I would move to the South of France and I would spend the rest of my life in the South of France writing stuff I wanted to write. And occasionally I would publish a comic book that I didn't care if anybody read or not. That's how I would just sort of live out my life. It would never occur to me, you know, oh, I, Tarzan's been ruined for the last 60 years. I'm going to buy the rights to Tarzan and make my own Tarzan movie, or I'm going to buy, a, you know, Metamorpho and Aquaman and team them up in the world's greatest comic book. I just, those things don't, as, a, as an end game, that doesn't appeal to me in any way. All right. In an effort to kind of boil this down to something that makes any kind of sense at all. First of all, I think we need to throw out the idea that Warner Brothers is interested in selling anything. Right. If they did it, it would be some sort of licensing deal, I would assume. Right. They're not going to yes. give up the yeah, chance to make yeah. Superman and Batman movies. So they're going to license their deal. And they've got a big licensing department. They know how to make licensing deals. Even the money doesn't make any sense to me because a licensing deal for all of DC would be a giant lump sum to like as a down payment then you'd have to give them a giant percentage of everything you published. And at the end, if you didn't meet the total guarantee, there'd be a balloon payment on top of all the percentages. Like if the percentages overpay the total amount of the deal, then they just keep all the extra. If it runs yeah. short, then you've got a giant balloon payment at the end of the deal. And trust me, the deal would be set up to expire at some point. It wouldn't be unending. So, you don't you get all the bad stuff without getting into the good stuff and you're paying out the nose. I just it makes no sense to me. That's well, why I'm so happy to talk to you and Tom, because <laughs> we I, first of all, I love you guys. I've loved you guys forever. I love the stuff that you do professionally and personally. You're awesome. But the thing I like most about you guys is that you have common sense. <laughs> that, that's that's that nobody else is going to believe that larry you can say it all day but no but you know there's really not much evidence of that you can get it's, shenanigans it's, and stuff but at, I'm, at, I'm, I'm making that my back tattoo <laughs> at the at the end of it though you're trying to figure it out like we if this is true we don't have all the information because right. that does not make any sense at all to anybody so the the numbers i heard it's half a billion dollars to buy in at a small thing, a $25 million per person thing. So already, whatever money you're thinking you're making, it's 1 20th of whatever it pulls in, right? right. Oh so, my Lord. so that's going to take forever. Like, I, I did the math, but it's like 20 years to get your money back uh, at, at 1 20th of whatever you're doing. Like, if it's one guy, that kind of makes sense. It's six or seven years to make your money back. And I don't know. Yeah, Maybe. but you could be on a panel right. in San Diego, Larry. You could pay all yeah. that money and then you could get people to come and talk to you at San Diego. Wouldn't that be? Yeah, but if you, if you, if you, <laughs> like, if you what are you getting it? for your money? It's right, crazy. right, exactly. What are you getting out of it? Yeah. There's, there's one stupid way this makes sense. And that's the, <laughs> there's, well, like the, the problem with comic books is the people who love comics never have any money. And okay. the people who have money actually hate comics. They just, they're in there for the money. If you look at Shooter's track record post-Marvel, all of his fights in all of his companies were like the people with the money. Mm -hmm. Shooter wants to make comic books, but then all of a sudden people are like, well, no, we'd like to make some money. And then his, his ventures sort of fall apart. So everybody who comes into comics with money actually just thinks, oh, I'm going to make a lot of money. Mm -hmm. And anybody who actually knows how to make comic books never knows how to get money. And so the only way this sort of works as a way to make sense is if somebody has a ton of money who's outside of comics, they license the stuff from DC and use it as the stalking horse to publish their own material through the same imprint that they own and control. Right. And then it, then at some point, as they build that up in three to five years, you can either go public and cash out, or you can sell the company to another en entity. Basically you come in, you, you do what, you know, like when Mitt Romney bought Staples, he didn't buy it because he loves pens. He bought Staples what? because he could. Oh. <laughs> I, I know. It's what? A... I can't believe I you say that I'm... out loud. What's wrong with you? Do you, do you need a moment? <laughs> yeah, I might. Uh, I'll, okay. I'll, I'll, I'll just sit here in my clone yeah. club shirt and it, weep. Somebody could, easily, somebody could easily come in and put money into licensing DC Comics to do something in a way that they can cash out three to five years down the road, which is usually the maximum for some kind of venture capitalist. But even that's a stupid idea. So I just don't see it. I don't see where you get my, where you make money on this. I agree a hundred percent. I Let's... mean, if you have a character called like speed guy and you want to, 
you want to get a bump for it. And it's like, wow, the Flash versus Speed Guy and, and Speed Guy right. faster. That's cool. Except now, who owns that character? Right. Right. I mean, sure. Or, her. I mean, the whole thing's a mess. There's. I. I don't see why you would do this. There's so many no. more. I say this all the time when somebody says, "Hey, remember when you used to be in comics?" And I'm like. Okay, A, I was never in comics. I came in and like peed all over comics and then left. But like there's so many ways to make more money for less effort yes. than comics. That at this level, I mean, you might as well just, you know, if somebody said they were gonna fund their personal moon base, I would believe that more than I'm gonna write super. Oh, yeah, well, there's, there's easier ways point. to monetize it for sure. Yeah, yeah you right, can, exactly. I can make yeah. I can make money with a moon base. I can see how that totally works. It's it's like it, right. it's like Jurassic Park. I can see how Jurassic Park is a great idea. <laughs> it's just the exhibits just shouldn't eat people. But the the now I forgot where it's going to go now. I got to talk about dinosaurs. My dinosaurs. Well, let's say even for half a second, they find a way to make the money work so that at least at the end of say five years everybody breaks even which is preposterous okay. but let's okay. say let's say that's a given right <laughs> they do that the logistics of putting out a licensed comic is such a nightmare yeah. people don't understand you couldn't even do whatever you want to do because everything you do has to be approved by warner brothers and if you agree that warner brothers and dc are the those executives and those approval processes are already the problem. Buying it doesn't fix the problem. I agree. <laughs> like Tom, you said- Tom, you used to edit the Star Trek book or, or supervise the guys that edited the Star Trek book, right? And you know there's, what it's like. And we just, we had the same problem with the, Planet of the Apes. There's a reason. Well, no, we didn't have the same problem with Planet of the Apes because 20th Century Fox didn't care by that. And so I would, I would send stuff into the Planet of the Apes licensing person at 20th Century Fox and she'd be like, I don't even know what this is. Stop sending it to me. <laughs> <laughs> so, just, but in the Star Trek people, it's, it's not that they're bad people. It's just that they've got other things going on. You're lucky to get two Star Trek comic books out every month just because that licensing person in charge of the division has other, they got, you know, Star Trek napkins and Star Trek toiletries and Star Trek uh, bed sheets. <laughs> right. They got, they, got, they got, you know, comic books is just the thing they do on Tuesday afternoon. And so no matter how hard you try, you're not going to get 40 Star Trek books out in a month. And I don't, and, and you know, DC, the thing about DC is that nobody wants to hear is that the bench is not that deep. There's Superman, there's Batman, there's Wonder mm. Woman, there's maybe the Flash. And then you start to drop off. There's Cave Carson and, you know, and even, even Green Lantern barely makes the list, right? You got right. Green Lantern, Green Arrow, then what? Elongated Man? Right. And Walk, Plastic Man. man? And you got Tommy tomorrow and Space Cabby and John Jones the Martian Manhunter and it's like you know I don't I don't see I don't you know and also because I like vision in these areas I don't see a whole lineup of comics where people are like oh boy Space Cabby's back the, I've lost I've lost the room now you're no no you haven't it, it's just <laughs> it's your truth is like there's nothing to say to you know honest truth I mean the, there's no way to DC characters are just kind of like that's what Oldsmobile was warning about. With their old, you know, that's not your father's old Oldsmobile. There's right. nothing DC can do. They, that's your old. All, all the, right. all the characters are just old and stale. So, yeah. if you were to do DC Comics, you would just do a new, uh, you know, a new Silver Age, right? Right. This guy's named Green Lantern, but and he's a space cop, but you know, he's got guns, <laughs> or, or you know, <laughs> right? He's yeah, he looks yeah. like uh, you know. Peter Quill from, you know, Guardians of the Galaxy. But that's the thing, like, Marvel's got that stuff covered, and DC's characters are being so well-served on the CW, like, what do you need comics for, really, anymore? Right. That's the main problem. And I think all of comics is facing that, right? I mean... yeah, you got to accept the fact that video is killing comics because like, video is like, killing like, everything. It's killing books yeah. too. It's just that comics are a small subset of books and books are being killed. So mm. you, magazines are dead. Like all these things are like on their last legs. Why Why is comics so unique? But, I'm not buying it. Well, there's, you know, there's a, the, the whole industry is sort of weird because it's the only industry currently where everything comes out on whatever it is now, Tuesday or Wednesday. And you know, there's 400 of them and you sort of have to either buy them all. You can't just sort of go in and pick up one because you're not part of the club anymore. There's no other business 
where people are still working hard to, we need 400 comics every 30 days. I just don't see where, you know, people are going to spend that kind of money and that kind of time when if you want to see people fly around, I can watch it on my computer and my phone and my TV. I have, I have a challenge for you, Larry. Okay. Take, take your imagination and try to recreate the arguments that you see from the other side on Facebook and present them to us in a way that makes any sense at all. <laughs> wow, that's a Herculean task. Because <laughs> first like, of what, all... What, what, are those, just, what are those guys thinking? I don't... It, I just I, see... Um, my problem is I just see how it's not going to work. I mean, those right. guys are... The, the, fact, the kids who are really into keeping their comics and stuff are people that are invested in the format. And the fact is, like... This uh, the lockdown Corona thing did not help because I'm like the biggest fan of newspapers of all time, but I'm a news junkie and I get my news on my phone and my desktop and my TV later. I don't need the paper in the, in the morning because no one is doing in-depth stuff like they used to because no one right. can get to the newsroom. Right. The right. Lock, you know, so so all people's creativities and information and digital stuff, it's, it's all going to your devices. And so I love, you know, the, the oversized treasury editions where, you know, Superman fights Muhammad Ali, but you know, I'm just going to go watch Ant-Man. Right. Sure. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's a lot it's like, easier for sure. And I'm a guy that loves the format. Right. So, right. so much that, you know, I had to make my own, like a regular <laughs> fan, <laughs> a regular fan is just forget it. You know, I mean, you're going to be, no one is like, I'm a web comics fan. They're hey, like, hey, you ahead. know, they, they like a particular one. Sure. It's, right. It's not the format. So, you know. Hey, that, Tommy, you had, a guy, you had a guy on Facebook that was making some sort of weird predictions about like how he was going to make it work. Like he was so excited that somebody else was going to be able to do yeah. it. And if they do it, they did. What was the, what was his three prong plan or his four prong plan? Oh, it's a, it's a, it was, it was on the thread that Larry and I were on where he said, yeah. first he's going to, he's going to lower the price because comics always sell better when the price is lower, which yeah, is Yeah. People true. always yeah. make more money with lower prices. Right. That's, that's yeah. true. And then, yeah. And, I and, thought and, of that. And, and the corollary to that is that I'm going to go back to the old paper stock because that's obviously cheaper, which is, <laughs> which, you know, if, if you've ever, if you've ever published comic books before, the paper, the paper is actually the least of your problems. It's right. the, it's, it's a sunk cost and it's a specific cost that doesn't vary, but it's not the greatest cost. Yeah. The actual cost of paying the creators is your biggest cost. And then your overhead for having salaries is your biggest cost. And then his third one was that he was going to, he was going to, as if this was some kind of new idea and that people were just waiting for this, is that he had this army of, that he was going to build of social media influencers who are going to be tweeting and Instagramming and TikToking their way to pushing these comics out into the digital world. And they were just going to blow up huge. And it's like, first of all, it's not even, a, that's not a new idea. And second of all, that's not even going to work. That doesn't work for anything other than like the biggest stuff, but it doesn't work. It, go ahead. I was going to jump. Ben, uh, to give that guy his his credit, it's uh, that's uh, Randall Armstrong, and he's a, a mid twenties guy in uh, Florida, and I love that guy because all of your criticisms of you know that's not a new idea, it's not going to work. It's because he's in his mid twenties and he just right. loves the format, and so I never I never crap on him. Ever I used to I used to be that guy. I used to be that guy. <laughs> I used to be that guy. I get it exactly. So. Uh, so Randall, good on you, but you have to listen to the old guys because <laughs> right. the it's it's just that's nothing but pain if you if you're going to try to figure that one. Right. Out. It's, it, I I always think that there are certain parts of the wheel that have been invented and certain parts of the wheel right. that have already been destroyed, and you don't need to re-destroy the wheel. Right. In order to to piece together your company, I'll I'll embrace anybody with sort of a new idea where I go, oh, that might that might work, that could be a thing, but I don't get where. Like if we, if Dave and I still had a company, we'd be using TikTok and we'd be using Instagram and we'd be using Twitter to sort of supplement all the other stuff we were doing, but it wouldn't be like, we wouldn't be banking on any of that. It'd just be a way to engage the audience. I am really interested to see what the mid twenties people are going to figure out about this because I, I don't think it's going to be print comics because Mimi and I used to kid each other just about shipping that like. You know, couldn't you have been interested in butterfly collections because that would have been less weight to right. ship around the <laughs> graphic novels? It's like mailing bricks to people. Right. So you're already cutting into your. So, but poor Randall, he's a he's a new uh, 
distributor right when the distribution thing happened with Lunar and oh no, oh, no. and then so he's stuck with DC and he's getting like these giant boxes that have one damaged comic in it and it costs him twenty dollars in shipping and it's just like <laughs> no, Randall, no, no really just start dealing drugs man it's be, yeah it'd be better for your wallet and your blood pressure. Just- but also, you know, you can you can you can talk to all the guys that do the loot crates and stuff like that. Right. It's like, no, we don't want any comics. That weighs things down. You know, give me give me a thing on a sheet of paper. Give me a give me a, a discount code. Give me something that you know. You know, give me a tiny action figure that weighs like a a, a spinach leaf or something. You, you guys, will, you guys will love this comics. story. I was talking to Bill Shanus when he was advi- when he was an advisor to Loot Crate, and, and they were trying to do comic <laughs> interest boxes, and Bill got the most interest because he found somebody that was willing to cut sponges into shapes of superheroes. And the big selling point was they didn't weigh nothing. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I got. Luke, gotta... Luke Crate was so excited about the superhero sponges. <laughs> oh man. Hey, you just add water. That's its superpower. So hey, we we've we've pretty much destroyed this, but let's let's wrap this bad boy up at least this this episode um does any of us think that this has any chance uh, well let's rate the report that rich did you mean actually actually have somebody doing the comic some somebody actually licenses yeah, it's, all it's, the publishing it's never from, from warner i think it's never never no somebody somebody with that much money is going to who has sense is going to talk to the money guy going Man, you could buy pogs and make more money. Right. You know? <laughs> it's like don't don't do it. If you're yeah. if you're dying to write Superman, just go write Superman and don't show anybody. Right. Because you know? it's a good yeah. thing there's no clones of Superman running around anywhere. There's no <laughs> pseudo spy Superman characters that you could just write or create that you know wouldn't you know wouldn't cost you as much. Wouldn't that well, be awesome? Eat- if- I'm sorry, Tom. Go ahead. I'm sorry. No, go ahead. Yeah, yeah. I, I was going to say, wouldn't it be awesome if somebody with that money, like you know, Rob Liefeld or Kevin Smith, gets all together and then just starts doing like Steel? Like I'm going to do a Steel reboot, right? <laughs> and then you know, <laughs> something like that, I think might happen. But like right. licensing the whole thing, no, no, that's never going to happen. It's too no. complicated, and it's not. It is not a good use of your money and time. Well, and even like I said, even if you could work the money out, the the, yeah. the editorial logistics are a nightmare. Yeah, because you're not even in control of your own editorial. The whole likeness right thing, I I actually didn't consider. Of course, you guys came up with that, the like approval of likenesses. But I, you can see it would tie up for months. Like, no, nah, Superman's hair is wrong. Yeah, you know, right. I mean, they could conceivably say that. Sure. Uh, yes. The whole like redrawn Jack Kirby's faces, so it looks more like Kurt Swan, right? And, and that happens line wide. No, there's no way you could put comics out. You can't. You can't have any. You couldn't have any event that may or may not impact the movies or the TV shows. So you're, yeah, you know, you're really sort of strapped creatively, artistically, and financially. So I don't. I think it's never. I think it's. Yeah, I'm with you. <laughs> well, thank you so much, Larry, for joining us and 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 debunking this silliness that. <laughs> <laughs> well thank you dave and, and Tom. i mean i think we you should do th- I, I definitely think we should do this again we'll get some hot oh, topic man. and then we'll just get on here and burn it to the ground what do you I'll say dr- i'll drop whatever i'm doing <laughs> to, to join too. you guys that this is awesome i i all right. appreciate it thanks a lot all right say Larry, goodbye you, come back to the tavern and again soon everyone we'll see you later <laughs> bye <All right>. bye bye <laughs>